Hello, and welcome back to the channel. Today, on my bench, I've got this old Soviet Maz missile carrying truck. That's a cool little model, but it's pretty old, and I built it a few years ago, so it really isn't good or up to my current standards. You can see it's got a lot of problems, like some missing windows, and those tires really aren't very good. So, I think today we are going to be upgrading this kit, changing things around, really giving it a lot of detail as well as a full weathering job, and everything like that. But, when I build this, I really don't want to just use that missile or do something boring like that. So, we're going to be converting this into something different. A mech carrying, mech deploying robot. And you can see, those wheels really aren't very good. So. To start off with, we're going to build that mech, and I'm going to completely scratch build and custom build this out of kit bash and just other parts I've had laying around. I've had these smaller scale helicopters laying around for a while in my stash, and I didn't really have any plans on building them, so all the parts and pieces will make for a great starting ground and way to build this mech that I'm building. And really, this entire process is just kind of a fitting up process and making sure everything works. I had to use all the space I had, so I had to switch over to a different desk, but you can see just getting everything together and always, of course, fitting it back up with that Maz truck to really make sure that it all fits. And now I tried to use this other big block for the legs, but I decided not to and use some other pieces from a space station toy that I had laying around, as well as more parts from those helicopter kits. Really just kind of putting everything together, just throwing things on, seeing what looks good and what will work. So now that I've got the main body all kind of thrown together and in a way that I like, we're going to move on to modifying the Maz truck in a way that we can to make it fit. This mech isn't as tall as the missile is, so we're going to have to shorten things up. So I just kind of measured everything up, see where I want all the mech parts to fit, and then drew lines where we'll need to cut. And of course, I just cut all of these pieces off with a Dremel, cutting them down, making everything right where I want it. We're not going to glue them back together yet because I'm going to leave that for a bit of a later part, but for now you can see they all went together good and everything kind of lined up in a way that I wanted. And just cutting off all the little excess bits, I say not gluing it on yet because if we want to modify something in the future, we can. So we're now going to go on to the mech and adding all the little details and filling in a bunch of areas that we missed and didn't do when originally just throwing everything together. And that's really the biggest difficulty with doing a kit bash like this, is making sure you fill in all the little holes and all the little pieces, because nothing really is going to fit together right, because you're of course not doing any of the parts normally or in the right way. And so then really helping filling up all these holes is some little milli putt. This is the first time I've used milli putt, and I gotta say it was really good. Just softening it up with some water so it really fits in, and then once it dries it can be sanded down and kind of carved in any way. And it's a really good filler for bigger areas when standard putty fillers aren't really big enough, because this really fills in big gaps and big areas and can really be sculpted in nice ways so you don't have to fill and sand and fill and sand like with the normal fillers that I would use. So I'm definitely going to be using Millie Putt more and it was a really good experience for the first time using it. Now it's on to the arms, or I should say weapon pods, of this mech. I really didn't feel like this mech needs any hands or anything, it's supposed to be a combat mech, so we're just going to give it combat pieces. And once again stealing more parts off of that Mi-24 kit that the main kind of hull of the mech is made of for, we're going to take these little rocket pods that the helicopter would carry, kind of put them all together, and then put them together in a nice little thing that will work good as just a little piece. Then for the other side, 
we're going to make this little cannon piece, which I took two cannons from other old kits that I had laying around and kind of threw them together to make them look like one big, really powerful armament that'll go really well. And now to add even more detail to this kit, we're going to be making some custom little handrails. For this, I'm just going to be taking some twist ties, scraping off all of the paper and covering that they have, which leaves you with just a nice wire that's really nice and bendable and good to work with. So once I take them out, I bend them up into the shape I want, and then just putting some putty in these little holes that are already pre-drilled in this part of the model I'm using, just sticking them in and align them, getting them all set up right, so they really make for nice little handles that look good. After that, we're going to be gluing on those arm parts and those arm pieces. That really came out pretty cool. And they'll be glued up nice and close to the sides of the mech, and it'll really make it look like this thing has a ton of armament and is ready for one heck of a fight. Which I think looks really cool. And with those arms on, we're going to be adding some of the final little details to this mech, giving just a few more parts and covering up just a few more holes. And then we're going to be doing the coolest part and gluing up the top to the legs and basically completing this mech fully. So this part really wasn't too hard. I had prepped everything well and just gluing it all together, putting a ton of super glue on there just to make sure everything's good and it'll be good to go. So now we're going to start on to modifying the Maz truck. To start out with, I'm going to be adding some 3D printed tires that I sculpted and deformed to look like they're real truck tires and not these pretty bad ones that originally came with this older kit. So to fit those on, I'm going to have to grind off all of the extra parts and stick out pieces that hooked up to those original tires and that'll allow us to fit on these nice new tires. As you can see here, just kind of throwing them on. For now, I won't be putting them on because I'm gonna paint them separately, so they're just gonna get test fitted. Then, we have a few little modifications just to allow the mech to fit onto this truck properly and make it fit well, so we'll be cutting things up. Now, we have the mech fully together and I was able to test fit and see, we're gonna be gluing on that top piece back to the tower and just kind of making this all one piece, one very nice looking tower, just a little shorter than it used to be. And with that tower back together, I'm gonna to go on to just kind of adding in and putting some of the details that I had to pull off of the side of this thing back onto it, just kind of detailing it up, this little ladder making sense. And then I'm gonna add what was actually those parts that I cut off onto the back as the supports for the mech's legs as it sits on it. As you can see here, just making sure it all fits up good, grinding it down, making sure it's flat and the right angle, just with a Dremel and a little sanding bit on it. And this really helps so you don't have to hand sand it all down flat and do everything like that. Then I'm going to fill in all of the little gaps and holes that were made by cutting the tower in half. Just putting some normal filler in there and then sanding it all down just so once it's painted it looks nice and flat and smooth then i realized i messed up a little bit and adding this ammo box and this kind of clip to these big guns means they won't fit so i have to grind it down and add a piece on the back but when you have a dremel and a sanding bit that's really not that big of an issue so once it's ground down I'll just throw a little bit of spare plastic card on the back of this thing, just kind of fitting it up. And with that, we're done for the mech and it fits on here great. So now I'm going to just file down and make all of the components on the tower so they fit nice and perfectly with the sides of the mech and they really clamp it on. And if you're wondering how we're going to clamp it on, we're going to be using magnets. So you can see here, I've already put the magnets into these little arm pieces, and then I'm sticking one on and just putting a little bit of glue on it. And then I'll be sticking it onto the mech and that super glue will hold the magnet right to the mech. 
and then afterwards we'll just paint over all of it and it'll look like it's normal. So to start off with the painting and to get everything ready, I'm of course going to be using my favorite liquid masking tape. I use this stuff from AK and it's worked great. It's so much nicer than having to use normal masking tape to mask in these tiny little difficult to reach windows and everything like that. And it's really improved and sped up the work process of getting all this stuff done. Getting this mech all covered in primer was really important, especially when working with all of these separate and differently colored parts. The primer really helped unify everything, as well as show any imperfections or weird things that you couldn't see because of the different colors or different finishes on all of the parts. So now that it's all nicely gray primered, we're going to be spraying on some dark green Russian paint. Now this is paint that I just had kind of left over from my Object 279 build, and it really goes well with this. I'm going to be using a slightly different shade from the mech to the truck, just to make things look a little different and give everything a little bit of a variance to it, make the mech kind of pop out from just the truck itself. Moving on to the truck. We're going to be spraying all of the underneath of it black. As you can see when I originally painted this truck, I really didn't paint it all too well. I was pretty new to airbrushing when I did this truck. So I'm going to be painting all of the under areas and all of those dark kind of crevice areas black. I mean, it won't matter too much because a lot of these areas will be covered with weathering materials and mud and all of that. So it won't really matter too much, even if we do miss, but it does make for a much nicer background for all of the weathering as well as hiding any light areas or areas that may not look so nice if they weren't painted black and were just the model's basic gray. Next, of course, while I have black still loaded up in the airbrush, we'll be just spraying those tires that we left off, and leaving them off really makes things easier to paint and make sure you get a nice full coverage on the whole tire, making it look really good. Now that we've switched over to green, it's time to of course paint up the whole truck itself. Now, I really made sure to get over those areas that were a bit lighter from the sand and kind of camo pattern that this truck used to have on it. I would have spray painted all of this over with a gray primer to unify it all, but I think those light areas actually add a little bit of variance to the green once they're on top, making it look like some areas are a little bit faded or some areas are a little bit more damaged with the darker and the lighter undertones underneath of the whole truck. It's a very subtle effect when you move on and once all the weathering is put onto this, but I think it does add just a little bit of depth and just a little bit of interest to the whole truck itself as well with leaving some areas having that original 
darker army green that I had painted on originally on this truck when I built it. Now that all the painting on the kit is done and I've covered it all with a satin clear coat to seal everything up, we'll be adding on these nice decals that I've had kind of laying around for a while. This one is from one of those old Soviet helicopter kits and it'll give me some nice Russian and Soviet area decals to add on. I believe some of the decals that are going on this are even from the original Maz when I had originally built it because I hadn't put decals on it at that point. So I'm just going to cut out the ones I want to use and save the other ones for later. Now I'm just putting on these water slide decals how I normally do it and there are plenty of tutorials online but if you'd like to see me do a tutorial on how I put on water slide decals let me know in the comments and I'll make one on the next build when I do more decals and add more interesting little things because these decals are really a nice and easy way to add different details and cool little things like numbers and symbols to your model kits and once you get used to them, they really aren't that hard to put on. Now it's just a continued little detail, I'm going to be throwing on some little wiring and stuff just to make some interesting parts to this model. So I just had this little copper wire laying around, so I'm just going to throw it on using some super glue and putting it in some of the pre-drilled and other holes that were already on this kit. And it adds just some really dynamic and interesting looking parts to the model kit. And I think it really makes for a very simple and quick to add detail. Now I'm just going to quickly paint on some chrome paint onto the stabilizer bars and these little pistons that would push them out. And this will really just add some nice little detail for when they slide out because they actually are able to slide in and out with this kit because I'm keeping all of the functioning details of this kit like it moving up and down and the stabilizer bars all functional on this so it can be displayed both standing up deploying the mech or kind of down in its transport mode so now i'm just going to be washing the entire model all of the truck and all of the mech in this nice dark tamiya black panel liner just kind of coating everything and then going back with a q-tip just getting all of the little bits and make sure there's no big puddles but this will really just kind of add a darker more grimy aspect to it as well as bringing out all of those details and making everything really kind of pop out because this model does actually have a fair few nice details like all of these rivets and all the panel lines and pieces it has.
Now, moving on to even more weathering, we're going to be throwing on this heavy AK mud weathering stuff. This is marked as kind of a diorama weathering, but I find it really makes for a good base layer mud texture and mud application to any heavily muddied or anything that you want to put a lot of mud onto. It's really easy and it's really nice. It's an acrylic base as far as I can tell, so it washes with water and you can clean your brushes off, although I would definitely recommend not using a good brush for it. Definitely use a harder bristled older brush to apply it all on but it goes on really nice and gives this really nice muddy texture to it and then now with all those wheels painted and muddied up and all of the mud that I want to put behind them I can of course glue those wheels on and make them look all nice and these wheels look way better than those original very low detail not deformed wheels that this kit originally had on it I'm really happy with how they came out. And I say if you want to see these wheels and possibly get them for your own builds and for your own Maz or any Russian trucks, they'll be on my Colts 3D page, which will be down in the links in, in the description. And so now that they're on, I'm just going to add even more mud and really get all this mud up. I want this truck to look like it's really been through a lot of it even adding some mud to those stabilizer pieces, being careful to try and not get too much mud onto those piston pieces. And of course adding some mud to the feet of the mech itself, just because I want to make it look like this thing has been in service a while, and it's stepped through some muddy areas just like the truck that's carrying it has driven through. Now, with all that mud texture dry, I want to add just a little bit more color variation and interest to those, so I'm going to be adding some pigments. Now, I mixed up a bunch of the various pigments I had, a lot of the brown, and then adding a little bit of this sand color, as well as just a little bit of gray, just kind of making a custom mix of different pigments, really to make a nice blend that I can add on that will look really cool and of course add a lot of interest to that mud which as you can see on the truck right now looks pretty gray and not very interesting at all so just kind of throwing all that together mixing it all up and then we'll get to putting it on the truck itself these pigments I really tried to keep everything pushed into the crevices and the darker areas really where it wouldn't look like there's a ton of pigment on here and more that it's just kind of an extension and color variation of all of that different mud that I have out on there so once of course I put the pigments on I of course covered it with the pigment fixer it's I use an AK pigment fixer along with all these sort of different pigments I have and it works very well it dries nice and flat and I think this step really added a lot of different variants and interest to what would otherwise just be dark gray mud onto that and so now I'm going to be adding a nice little custom tow cable because I always like to make custom tow cables and other things which really add some nice little details to all these kits and up in the card there will be a link to the video where I show how I make these really nice looking custom cables that are actually pretty easy to make once you know how to make them. So if you want to learn how to do that, go check out the video. And now to finish up the weathering on this, we're just going to be covering the whole thing, the mech and the truck in streaking grime. This is an AK streaking grime I got, and 
it's really cool. It works great, and I've seen a lot of people use Streak and Grime to great effect. So, I just cover the whole model with it, and then coming back with some enamel thinner later, just thinning it all down and brushing it into all of those darker areas and making it look like this is a very weathered, very heavily used mech and heavily used truck. And I think it really gives this nice effect. You have to go with a lot. I probably put a little bit too much streak and grime on some of these areas here, but of course just going over with different brushes and lots of enamel thinner to thin it down and really blend it into the whole kit itself. It really ties everything together and makes it look like not just the lower areas of this vehicle are dirty, but the whole thing has been through a lot and really has gotten very dirty. So now we gotta peel off all of that liquid masking tape that I'd put on before. This stuff comes off really nice and easy. You just gotta kinda pick at it, get a spot you can tear from, and then pull it with some tweezers. And so I pulled all this off before I did the matte clear coat that I covered the entire model with, just because I wanted to haze up those windows, make them look like they had fogged up, or were just kinda covered, because a lot of these windows aren't in the nicest shape because of this as being an older model as well as when I originally built this I didn't paint the interior and there was no real way to paint it. So with it clear coated now we have the final model itself. I really like how this entire thing came out. It looks really cool and it's very different. Not really anything like it I've ever seen as well as still being functional allowing you to magnetically clip on the mech to the tower and then of course lower it down. I think it looks really cool and it came out really nice. So if you like this video hit that like button and go check out some of the other builds I've done on my channel here. A lot of them came out pretty cool and they're fairly different from this one. And while you're there you might as well subscribe because I'll be making even more interesting sci-fi builds in the future. So enjoy these final pictures of the whole mech and truck and see you in the next one.